In this video series, I'll be creating server pod application, starting from installation, folder structure, creating endpoints, and finally dealing with custom class objects. We will be covering everything with a simple BMI calculator example. You might already know about server pod, or it's quite possible that you have tried server pod yourself. And don't worry, even if it's your first time, I'm gonna tell you all the details about server pod, what is there in the new release, what's planned for later this year or earlier next year. And we will cover this whole thing with a simple example to understand. Now server pod is a backend written in Dart language. So you use the same language in your Flutter application and even on the server side. And to start with a simple application, we don't really need Docker at this point. We will start with server pod mini project. Server pod mini is the best fit when you want to call third party APIs from your server or you want to implement something simple as utility. Later on, we will convert the same project to full blown server pod application. So don't worry about that. We will talk about migration as well, how you can use database, how you can use file system authentication, all this thing we're going to cover in the later part of this video. So let's just start with a server pod mini tutorial. Let's open up terminal and start working with server pod. First, I will ensure that server pod is not installed so that I can show you how to install it from scratch. And the command is very simple. You just have to write dart pub global activate server pod CLI, which is the package which we are installing. It will download all the dependencies which is required by server pod CLI to perform its action. And within a matter of seconds, it will be done. Let's verify the installation by running server pod command and you should get something like this. Perfect. The installation is done. Now it's time to create a project. We'll keep it simple at the beginning. I'll just create a test pod and with mini server pod version. In the mini version, you cannot use database. You cannot use some of the file servers, but that's fine. We want to start something basic and we want to learn how to create endpoint, how to create model and for such things, mini is the best fit and don't worry later on we will upgrade to the full blown server pod project with file server and authentication and whatnot so don't worry about that for time being let's run the server and see it in action so the server started successfully you can also verify by going to google chrome and going to localhost 8080 you should get something like this ok status with a date timestamp. perfect now it's time to start vs code and do some coding in the server side so I have browsed the directory where I created this project and I will just simply open the server project inside VS code because we are going to modify the server first. And this is the folder structure. When you want to execute, you execute the main dot dart and all the source code is present inside the lib folder. So let's have a closer look inside endpoint and see what it is doing. So if you remove the comment, you have nothing but a method, hello, which is returning a future of string. It's as simple as that. Let's also have a look at the model. Now, even if you look here, there's a class example with multiple fields. So nothing fancy, nothing new. It's just simple Dart and YAML, which you have already used in Flutter. Let's create a new endpoint inside endpoint folder. And it's always recommended to use endpoint suffix whenever you are creating an endpoint. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So I will create test endpoint just for the sake of demo of course I could have used a better name but let's start with test endpoint and it should extend endpoint class of course that's an entry point which will tell server pod that this method needs to be exported for flutter all right so here I'm going to define a simple method to calculate BMI now if you look at the signature it's just returning future of double and of course we have to use asynchronous because we are using future and we will return a simple value it's that simple now one important point that you need to remember whenever you create endpoint you have to provide session as the first parameter if you don't want to accept any other parameter you can just leave with session but if you want to accept some input in the method so first create session and then accept input now session is handled internally by server pod so you don't even have to pass the session value from flutter side from flutter side you will be just passing the height and weight and user session authentication and every other thing will be managed by server pod there are a lot of things which you can do with help of session like uh, logging api request and response you can generate reports 
and there are so many use cases of session. But for now, let's focus on BMI because we want to keep it simple. I've just added a formula to calculate BMI, which is weight divided by height square. Now in another instance of VS Code, I have opened the Flutter project where we will be testing this test endpoint and we will calculate BMI. Now, if you go to the main file, you will see the template which is created by server pod. So we'll leave everything as it is. We'll just focus on this call hello method, which is triggered on click of a button. And instead of calling hello, we will be calling our own test endpoint for calculate BMI. So we'll write client dot test because that's the name of endpoint. And then we'll say dot calculate BMI. But unfortunately this doesn't seem to work and the reason is that this test endpoint is not yet generated yes you heard me right because we wrote the method but we didn't ask server pod to generate a client code and you can do that easily by running server pod generate inside terminal and it will generate related code inside the client project let's go ahead and verify that one more time inside flutter project so again i will write client dot test and it's not even appearing now and the reason because sometimes you know because both the editors are open the dart analysis server doesn't have updated code snippets so you can restart the dart analysis server and you should be good to go that's just a little tip over there um, in most of the cases it should work but if it doesn't work you can always restart the dart analysis server and it will give you the suggestion now here we will call calculate BMI with a hard coded value of 170 centimeter height and 70 kg weight. We are not going to use text field to capture this input and we'll just comment this out for now because we want to showcase how to return a model from calculate BMI. Instead of just returning a double value, which we have done already, we will try to return a model, a custom class object. So inside lib models folder, we will create a new file called bmi.spy.yaml. Now, when you use .spy, it adds server pod yaml syntax. So whenever you make mistakes, whenever you write something wrong, it can give you suggestion at that same line. So it's an advanced version of yaml, which is backed by server pod. But within the file, you will be writing just a simple yaml syntax, nothing different than original yaml. All right, so here I created a BMI data class and it has just two fields. One is result, which have the actual BMI value and the other is message, uh, what is the value corresponds to. And I don't think we need commas here because it's a YAML, not Dart language. Uh, it's a muscle memory that whenever you end the line, you write comma. So it's totally fine. We don't need commas here. Perfect. Now run the server pod generate command so that it generates the model code for you. And now you can use that model here inside return value of calculate BMI. Now you might be thinking that do I have to write server pod generate after every single change in the code? And the answer is not really. You can use watch parameter with server pod generate command, which will uh, keep looking for your changes and it will automatically generate. But to be honest, we don't need that because in reality, you work on some feature, you make all the changes and finally you say that now generate the code, make it ready for the client. Like in this example, I have wrote like whole logic of calculating the message based on the BMI value. And then I'm constructing the BMI data object and returning it from this method. And finally, we will say server pod generate so that it gives you the final result in the client method. I hope you got the grip of developing endpoint inside server pod. So now it's time to check the implementation inside Flutter code. Let's maximize it. And here I'm calling calculate BMI. And now you can notice that the BMI data type is BMI data, which was previously just a double value. So our changes is working without running dot analysis server and everything is working fine. Now let's print this result, the BMI value and the message to the interface. And for that, I'll just use the result message. I'll just nicely format it and run the application. And again, let me tell you that we are not capturing these values from text editing controller. We are just hard coded uh, value because we want to test the feature and we'll be writing the whole application in later videos.
Now, once I give it a run, it gives exception that 404 method not found. And whenever you get 404, it means this is not present on the server. And the reason is very simple because we started the server long back when test method was not there, test endpoint was not there. So what we have to do, we have to restart our server. And the simple command is dart bin main dot dart and it will restart server for you. Now it should work perfectly fine. And here's the result, 24 point something and it's a normal weight. Perfect, I have a normal BMI but it's on the edge, so maybe I need to do a little bit more workout. All right, so you understood the concept of endpoint, you understood the concept of model generation, how to link it with Flutter, and how to call methods. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, you learned something new, something interesting, make sure to give it a like, subscribe the channel if you're new here. In the next part, we will be covering the Panels app API written inside ServerPod. So make sure to subscribe, I will see you guys in the next one. And it's done.